Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we're looking at replacing the final output transistor with a MOSFET or should we say the IRF 520N from International Rectifier along with its companion parts. So here we have a multi-mode 2 059 chassis and we're going to do the tests on this radio so it performs. So there's our original transistor, the Mitsubishi 2SC1969, which we all know very well. This transistor being the workhorse of many a sideband radio for many, many years in the 80s. So we're going to have a go at replacing this. So there is the IRF520N from International Rectifier. This should be a genuine one, so I got it from DigiKey. And there's the companion part that I've had made, the EN369FN. So, let's see how it works. So we'll do some tests on the multi-mode beforehand. So, on a carrier, on FM, just over 10 watts. Not too bad. So, I'm hoping for that once we've done the conversion anything more is a bonus so a quick look on the two-tone just so I've got a comparison before and after so this modification requires that we remove R38 and R39 so that's those two resistors there so they need to come out and of course we need to remove the 1969 as well so I've unsoldered the 1969 taking the screws out from the side and we'll pull it out on its heat sink and we'll work on it from there and we'll take these out as well whilst we're at it so nicely done So there's our 1969 with its insulating pad. So I'm going to be replacing that. So we'll just test fit the the IRF against the heatsink and it works fine. So I've got some new insulating pads there that I want to use. I'm just test fitting everything, make sure everything fits good. Make sure the actual transistor doesn't touch the heatsink, which it doesn't. Now I'm not going to use the plastic nylon screw that come with it. I'm going to be replacing it with a metal screw. So obviously we need the insulating ring as well. So I managed to get some of those. So I'm just making sure that the metal part of the transistor is not conducting to the heat sink and it's not and there's our area that have cleaned up so we'll put the transistor back in let's make sure nothing's nothing shorting out because that would be death to the to the MOSFET quite quickly so I've carefully bent the legs over, I've trimmed them down, now I've soldered them into place. Just like this. Eh, nicely done. Now the companion part goes across the gate and the source so the positive of the companion part goes to the gate and the other one goes to the source which is negative so just like that across the two end ones now the next part we need to fit we need to fit a new biasing potentiometer so that goes in between the junction of R38 and 39 and the feed which was that point just shown. So it goes in like that. 
so we don't need to worry about the biasing part on the other side of the board as this one now takes over. So now we're going to set the bias voltage. So we're on a dead key on SSB. And the best voltage here is about 3.7, 3.8 volts. Anything more and it starts to get a little bit hot. And if you go too far up, it goes into self-oscillation. So around about 3.7 is good for this. So we'll set it at that and give it a test. So a quick alignment of the output stage just to make sure that everything was working correctly. And we have a nice healthy 11 to 12 watts, which is to be expected. So I've had, I've had some uh, SSB tests on this. And the stations that have um, been speaking to have said they, they wouldn't know that it was a MOSFET output. Everything was clean and linear. Sounded just as good as the old one. So I think this is a win. Anyway, I should have a few of these up for sale soon. If you're interested, join my Facebook group. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.